The stereotype is these people who are godly dressed and with, with sunglasses and running around and looking like people you see in movies or TV shows. That's generally not the case. A lot of these guys are dressed just as regular businessmen. Decent suit, a white shirt. They will use violence against you unless you comply with their demands. The Alcas, they just had this look. They had this edge about them. Maybe they'd be a little scar over the eyebrow or this kind of swagger or glare. You knew who they were. It's generally believed that modern-day Yakuza gangs were formed in Japan at the end of the Second World War, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki had been destroyed by atomic bombs. After the war, when Japan lost, I mean, Tokyo was, for example, was devastated. Half the city was just leveled. You had all these people coming back from the war, and there was no work for them. People were starving to death, and the only thing that kept them in business was the black market. So people naturally gravitated towards crime. What used to be common was a protection racket, where the Yakuza will come in, they'll, they'll say, hey, nice place you have here. We'd hate to see somebody mess it up. So why don't you pay the, the Yakuza a certain amount? They get their money, you get some kind of tangible reward, and you get the added benefits of having a sort of on-call security service. In the old days, that wasn't a bad deal. But who actually runs the Yakuza today? Its 50,000 members are said to be run by a small star chamber of ruling bosses, known as the Wayabun. And there are 21 different Yakuza organizations, and each one has a sort of different structure, but basically they're all pyramid. And they're structured as a kind of all-male family. There are no females in the Yakuza not many females with any power. So you have at the top of each part of the pyramid, the Oyabun, that is the father figure. Under him are the oldest brother and all the other children. Depending upon where you are in the Yakuza group, you pledge allegiance to the Oyabun, or you pledge allegiance to the older brother. There are also brother-brother ties within the organization. It's very fraternal, it's very patriarchal, and it is meant to be a family kind of structure. Everybody starts on the bottom, they work their way up. They can start as early as teenagers. First are their loose associates, and they earn their positions, and they give them positions of more responsibility as they perform better. And now, as far as performance, that means money. See, a Yakuza must pay dues to his organization to belong. Those who cannot produce a profit are usually shown the door. Authority is absolute from the top down. You're never supposed to speak back to your elders or dispute your boss. There's this famous Yakuza saying, which is, if the Oyabun says the passing crow is white, it's white. The Yakuza would often say, we're not like the mafia. We, we have a certain code of honor. We have loyalty to the bosses. We don't bother the average person in the street. We provide services for society. You know, We keep the crazies and psychos off the street. There's a certain truth to this, but at the same time, these guys are also criminals, you know, and there's some, some really nasty people and they do some horrible things. Their image is of these noble outlaws that uphold a code of ethics that don't bother the ordinary Japanese person, but if you're in their way or you're not paying the protection money, then you do get killed. A large number of the murders in Japan every year are created by the Yakuza because they're violent groups. 